When Moshe Rabbeinu told the Jewish people the 613th mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah, did they all do so? Were they required to do so? Are we each required to write a Sefer Torah for ourselves? And if in the mitzvahs, was Eden and Zion and Stabbe given by Moshe from the Aboyim Shana, one of the mitzvahs, the Jewish people were commanded at the end of the 40 years in the desert, the Samach Mamash, I call upon him, Riyom Peter Asmoisha, very close to when Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, is the mitzvah from Ksiva Sefer Torah, the mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah. Where do we learn that from? We may learn up from the Pasuk, we learn from the Pasuk that says, Vato Kis for the Chemas Hashir you have to write for yourself the song, referring to Parshas Hazinu, which, as the Rambam tells us, teaches us as mitzvahs, I say that there's a positive mitzvah, I'll call Ish Vishmi, so for every single Jewish person, Richtov says, for Torah Latzmo to write a Torah for themselves. Now, the Baldas Det Sivo, if you listen to how the instruction was given, it was the Aton now, Kisvul Chemas Ashir Agome, you have to write this song which includes the whole Sefer Torah. When was that is Gikum and Al Sahono to the Knisa the Oretz? That was part of the preparation of how to enter Eretz Israel. As the Pasa continues, Kiavi El Noel Hadom Agome, when I take you into the land that I promised you, the Onsa Hashir Azois Gome, that song will be a guide for you about how you're supposed to behave. His movement, so the timing indicates as Yedi Idot Gleich, Viato Gidaf. Sounds like every Jewish person at that particular point in time had to then write, fulfill that requirement, which means on Shabbat I say for Torah that's my to write a Sefer Torah for themselves. So if you read this at face value, there should have been this immediate rush to write Sefer Torah. It's Tamur. It's very strange then. We know that the mitzvah of writing a Sefer Torah was given to the Jewish people in proximity to or on the day that Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, which is Zayin Oder. We find absolutely no reference in any place, in any source, as in Ein We find no evidence that all the 600,000 Jews suddenly rushed about preparing uh, skins to turn into parchment to be able to write Sefer Torah. I'll call upon him on the Hebrew Bixivus Mashu Fun a Sefer Torah. Even just beginning to write a Sefer Torah, there's no evidence of it whatsoever. It would have caught our attention because it would have been a far greater achievement than the entire Jewish people in unison at the foot of Mount Sinai because it wouldn't just be everybody in the same place, it would be everybody doing the same activity, should have been recorded somewhere. In addition to the fact, obviously, we know that the Jewish people for 30 days were involved in grieving for Moshe. On the Noch Basir of Nisan, and then shortly after that, on the tenth of Nisan, Zanidin and Aribu and Bakdomas Kamachonas Lze Demyardin, the Jews crossed the Jordan, and of course there were various preparations that they had to make to do so. All of that is recorded. Nothing about writing Sifater. Olahoyer, ask a day to Shimon, Isaiah Sifater. Think about it. In order to produce so many Sifater, Mervi Shishim Ribe, more than 600,000 Sifater, Musman Hoven Aribu Otsum from Yeria Shaklaf. You know how many pieces of parchment, sections of parchment you had to have? which all had to come from kosher animals. How much ink you had to have, quills, etc. That would have taken a tremendous amount of time, a tremendous amount of effort. And, and we see that did a whole lot of other things which indicate they were not invested in preparing Sifre Torah. Besides the fact, you can't imagine that every single one of the Jewish people was qualified to write a Sefer Torah. As we see in our own experience. Very few people are qualified enough to be able to write a Sefer Torah. Why would it have been different then? And especially to write a Sefer Torah that's beautiful, where you're using the best materials and the best kind of ink and the best kind of script. For the majority of people, that would require somebody else representing them. And yet, we don't find that any of this happened. So, what? There's a mitzvah, write a Sefer Torah, and it doesn't appear to have been fulfilled. We could expand that question further to say, to the question, uh, we can ask a question with regards to what Chazal tell us, on the day that Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, he wrote 13 Sifre Torah, he wrote 13 Sifre Torah, Yud Beis, Yud Beis Shvatim, one for each of the 12 Shvatim, and one that was placed in the Oren next to the Luchos. Same question. How is it feasible that Moshe Rabbeinu could write 13 Sifra Torah in a day? We know that a Sifra Torah takes weeks, if not months, to, to produce. So some of the Mephoshim suggest 
As Moshe had here and told, no, for index a shayman the Sifra Torah. Moshe had begun the project of writing the Sifra Torah beforehand, and on the day of his passing, he completed all thirteen Sifra Torah, which is more feasible. Vorum bechral is kol mashashav b'yem echad kosaf because generally, when Moshe Rabbeinu received information from the Eibushter, he recorded or wrote it down as a Sifra Torah immediately. Vechayim bechol yom. And so it went day by day. And all that was missing from the Sifra Torah that he had been preparing were the very last sections which he did on the day that he passed away. Now, the truth is, we could even say that there are certain parts of the Torah, like from Pashas Nitzavim until the end of the Torah, that it's possible Moshe Rabbeinu even wrote them in advance. That we find Moshe Rabbeinu wrote about the future of what was going to happen to him, that he was going to pass away. It was possible that Moshe, with prophetic insight, could have written these parishes from Nitzavim until the end of the Torah before he passed away. Where, of course, it's pretty obvious that Moshe did not share the content of what he had already written with the Bnei Yisrael because it wasn't yet relevant or available to them. It may be that actually the solution for how all the Jewish people produced their Sifrei Torah. The Rambam describes to us how the Torah was taught by Moshe Rabbeinu to Aaron, to the Skenim, and then to the Jewish people. As nachdem vize hom geher de mitzvah ilchisef from Moshe Aaron chulei, if the Jews had now heard certain halachas and certain elements of Torah from Moshe Rabbeinu, from Aaron, from the Skenim, etc., of zeif hashim and mitzvah hibi megillus, they could have written it in a megillah, meaning to say a, a standalone piece of parchment from vach zeif lenged enoch lernen, which they could then learn from, which would be practical for forty years. You have a reference so a scroll that you could that you could use. And then at the end, put it together, make a Sefer Torah. Which would imply that for the time the Jews were in the desert, they had actually produced the vast majority of the Torah in their personal capacity. And they just needed to fill in, like Moshe Rabbeinu did, the final sections, which would happen as they were told. So you could say, now that Moshe Rabbeinu told him that there's an instruction to write Sefer Torah, maybe that's what happened. Each Jewish person then finished off his Sefer Torah in the same way as Moshe Rabbeinu had finished off his Sefer Torah as well. And maybe that's the answer. And so it is actually re- uh, realistic that they all produced their own Sefer Torah. Except there are three questions on this. It's difficult to use this explanation for three reasons. Firstly, there's a debate in the Gemara Gitin about how the Torah was written. One opinion is that it was written Megillah Megillah, which means as things were uh, told or as they occurred. So that section of the Torah was written, and at the end it was all put together. The other opinion in the Gemara in Gitin is that the Torah had to be written as a complete Sefer Torah. Now, what does complete Sefer Torah mean? Well, we'll go with the opinion. What it means is, it means that the Torah had to be written in the correct order. In other words, not as the information was provided, but rather in the correct order, because we know that the Torah is not necessarily chronological. So if you're saying that the Torah was written in the correct order, they would have to delay writing certain things until it was the correct chronological moment to write them. But still, it was a work in progress. In other words, according to the way Tosis is describing it, the so-called complete version of the Torah means that the Torah is written in the Seder as we see it in the Torah, which is not fully chronological. Because the Torah does not necessarily always prioritize chronology. And there are certain parashas that were said earlier than when they were actually written. So therefore, they would have information in their head that had already been told to them that they would not write down until they were told what the particular order had to be. And then they would fill in, so to speak, the gaps. So means not that you wrote something down as you were told, which is the Megillah version, but you wrote something down when it was appropriate to insert it into the Torah. So even with those opinions, you can say this works, that everybody was collating the Sifra Torah over time and completing them when the instruction was given about the But that's not going to work with Rashi's view in the Gemara Dein Gitten, because of a neat late Rashi. 
Because Rashi's view is that when it says that the Torah was given complete, it means complete. That nothing could be written down in a Sefer Torah until all of the parishes had been provided, which means that you had to write all of the Sefer Torah at the end of the 40 years, which takes us back to our original question, how is it feasible that everybody was able to produce so many Sefer Torah in such a short span of time? And Beis, secondly, Bechlal Tzorichin, let's go back to what the Rambam said. The Rambam said it is a mitzvah for every single person to write a Sefer Torah. Tzorichin, see the Rambam means to Zogan, as Kolech of Echem Yisol, Yedabach Yehuva. Was the Rambam saying that every single person who is of an age, that they're required to fulfill mitzvahs? Flecht alein shreb me migil asal apashat ha-tere me meshech ti aboim shona. Did the Rambam believe that every single person, as soon as they became bar mitzvah, had now the obligation to start writing the Torah through the course of the 40 years in the desert, section by section? Especially when you consider that many of the Jews who entered Israel were born in the Midbar, which means that there were different stages and phases where people would come into this obligation and then would have to start writing the Sefer Torah. And last of all, Gimel, which might even be our main question. Let's be honest. The only reference that we have to writing Sifre Torah at that period was that Moshe wrote 13 Sifre Torah. Nobody says a word about the fact that the rest of the Jewish people were writing Sifre Torah. If every single person who was a Jewish male adult was at that point instructed to write a Sefer Torah, and Sefer Torah and did so, they wrote their own personal Sefer Torah. The same Chazal who told us that that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote thirteen Sefer Torah should have also mentioned, and all the other adult males also wrote Sefer Torah. The fact that Chazal only mentioned the thirteen Sefer Torah that Moshe wrote that implies that it wasn't this big chiddush that there's everybody writing Sefer Torah. That, that this is incredible seum happening of 600,000 Sifre Torah. Or at least 600,000 Sifre Torah being begun. That the fact that it's not mentioned tells us it's not a, it's not a Chiddush. It didn't happen. So what is the meaning of the fulfillment of the Atta Kisvelochem that you have to write Sifre Torah? To answer that question, we're going to raise a question that is relevant to us. And it's a well-known question that the Rebbe has discussed in a lot of detail in a different sicha. As it's a positive mitzvah, as the Rambam writes for every single Jewish adult to write themselves a Sefer Torah, why doesn't it happen? Why don't we see Jews doing this, including some of our greatest Jews in history? We don't see them putting a particular push to write Sefer Torah. And, and we don't see that there's a push that when a person becomes old enough to do mitzvahs, to become a bar, a, a bar mitzvah. Where the whole purpose of writing a Torah is lambda, that you should be able to learn from it, and we don't find that that happens. There's no special thing that when a person becomes old enough, they start to write a Sefer Torah. So what's the reason? The easiest way to answer would be The Rosh quotes, and this is how we follow practically, Nowadays that we have a Sefer Torah that sits in the Oren Kodesh on behalf of the community that the whole community reads from in public. So then, Then our responsibility is to write the others for him, or to, pr- to print and publish them, in order that we should be able to learn. Because the mitzvah of writing a Sefer Torah is in order to learn from the Sefer Torah. And seeing as we are not learning from the Sefer Torah that belongs to the community, so the mitzvah is then to have our own Sefer that we own, that we could learn from. Okay, Psaka Shach, as Hoidno is the Mitzvah, and I'm a Dafke Beil of a Lobe Sefer Torah. In fact, the Shach takes it a step further and says, actually, the Mitzvah for us today is specifically the books that we own and not the Sefer Torah that we write. Omen Eger, Stam, Geshim, Nod, Gedruk, this forum is Dach Kame, Vechama. And when it comes to written or published books, there are many people, I feel, from Divas, and an Eshtar, and in Gil, from Bar Mitzvah, including people who are young and just had their Bar Mitzvah, but Skaifen Sforim, I've said that, and say they buy Sforim and learn from them. And that's how we fulfill the mitzvah. And FLP, I, you will argue, but as there are more paskan, there are more says clearly, as that if a person buys a ready made Sefer Torah and doesn't even make one edit to the Sefer Torah, have a kechut of a mitzvah, it's like you're grabbing a mitzvah from the, 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 the marketplace and you do not fulfill the mitzvah of writing a Sefer Torah. 
Or the whole idea is Nikim Kim a mitzvah to boil the And the truth is, everybody agrees that it's not the ideal way to fulfill the mitzvah of writing a sefer Torah by buying one. It's dead in an alina more gives Zaki for him and nobody gets a sefer Torah. That's a halacha with regards to a sefer Torah. But by sefer Torah is for anachiv from ksiva because a sefer Torah does have a mitzvah to write the sefer Torah. But our reality is, we fulfill the mitzvah not with the Sefer Torah, but with the books that we have on our shelves that we learn from. Even the Ramah would agree that we, in order to fulfill our current day in mitzvah of having Sforim to learn, we are Yotze. By buying, we don't have to write them. And maybe that's the explanation over here. You don't have to necessarily own your own Sefer Torah or write your own Sefer Torah. I mean, Emerson is Dustin Kentir, it's Maspic, but that doesn't really answer any of the questions that we have raised. Because, we have absolutely no source that indicates, we also do not find in practice that a boy, when he becomes a mitzvah, should shrive and should write, or at least edit, or at least purchase for him, as we explained earlier. We don't necessarily find that the day of your bar mitzvah, you're already going out and buying svarim. Yes, people do it, but it's not an chiyuv that is like mandated in the Jewish community that that's what has to happen in order to fulfill the mitzvah to learn from the sefer. Or, in addition to which, there are many halachic authorities. Many, many halachic uh, authorities. As the Rosh Nitois and some of Vatos and Yemitzvah can see the Sefer Torah Kibshuta all believe that the Rosh was never suggesting that you no longer have a mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah because our primary mitzvah is to own Sforim. No, I mean, some Osef Zayn is adding, as Ho'idna is Sukkum and Nochachiv, then in addition to the broad mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah, which is all the way from Osher Abenu, nowadays there's an additional say, uh, mitzvah, which is Lichtev Chum Shetorah, Mishnah Gwaru Pirushel, to produce and write other books that we should have in order to be, to be able to learn from. Of a with that in mind, is it me an album coma or medes? We still have the original question that we raised. We come to us for say, come over, come from good daily Israel. How come it is that very many Jewish people, including some of our greatest leaders, were home and sicher, had to give any mitzvahs that they were very careful in all kinds of mitzvahs, they took a kind of both in the Hatchel or Holadeos to fulfill every mitzvah in the best possible way, according to all opinions. And yet, they did not invest in writing their own Sefer Torah or appointing somebody to write a Sefer Torah on their behalf. Which would have been the correct thing to do if you want to satisfy those opinions that say, that there is a mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah. Fulfill it. Why would you dodge it? Furthermore, even if there are great individuals in our history who did write their own Sefer Torah, we don't find that it was a project that they prioritized as soon as they were old enough to fulfill mitzvahs. In fact, we don't even necessarily find that they did it at the first opportunity when they could afford to do so. In order to fulfill this great mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah. But they seem to feel comfortable that they could let it wait for many years before they address this mitzvah. Why? We have to then say that even before these people had the opportunity to write their own Sefer Torah, they must have already fulfilled the mitzvah. And not only did they fulfill the mitzvah, but they must have fulfilled it in a way that they were satisfied is the ideal way to fulfill the mitzvah. And the fact that later they then invested further effort to write their own sefer Torah is it's not because they were missing a mitzvah that now they had to catch up. It was to add even more to the mitzvah of writing a Sefer Torah. How, though, did they feel satisfied that they fulfilled the mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah before having written a Sefer Torah? Shleim Abir Bozeh, the explanation is this. One thing that we all know, that is, across the board in every Jewish community, the custom is, as in Yedi Kilo, Farana Sefer Torah, was belong to every community owns a Sefer Torah as a community. In other words, in Tzugov, Tzedem was Yechidim Shreib and Sifret Teira. On Zayn and Zayn, Moses, Zubat HaKnesias, besides those Sifret Teira that are written by individuals or families and donated to the, to the community, Kama V'chama Zayn and Zayn, Moses, Yofa, Yofa. Many people, it's 100%, it's yours, belongs to the community. 
And others maybe want to contract and clarify if it still belongs to us or does belong to the community. Besides all of that is Menik Yisroel, as the Tzibur nem ding zusammen as Sefer of the that there is a concept of the community bind, um, collaborating together in order to get a Sefer to write, a Sefer Torah, on behalf of the community, or the Kniyav on a Sefer Torah, or they communally purchase a Sefer Torah. Those Sefer Torah, according to all opinions, belong to the entire community. And that illustrates us that every person who is a member of that community now has a portion in the fulfillment of that mitzvah of writing or purchasing a Sefer Torah. Is Obe Benegea Zach, what's belong to Atzibur, but you'll ask something that belongs to the community. Is that Shakra Vetaria? There's a whole elaborate debate. Tzim and Kenef them zogna as the Yochit, als Prat, or an Egenem Chedek in them. Can I say that I, as an, individ- as an individual member of this community, actually own a piece of the Sefer Torah, or is it that I'm part of the community which owns the Sefer Torah? Because the definition of a community is not just the collection of a whole lot of individuals. A community is a unique, new category of a new entity. Which is why when the person is donating the Sefer Torah to the community, it has to be done with very good intentions and clear conscience. Because this is not just you and I own something in partnership or a whole lot of us own something in partnership, it belongs to a new entity called the community. Let's, <coughs> for one moment, consider a possibility, which is not the ultimate possibility, but let's just consider. Let's say that the community are all like partners in the Sefer Torah, which means we would have the same legal uh, qualification as two partners, let's say, who had uh, commissioned the Sefer Torah together. So there are many halachic authorities that will say if they are partners who together own a Sefer Torah, that does not necessarily fulfill the mitzvah of the Sefer Torah. Because the requirement is that each person has to write a Sefer Torah for themselves. So if you're going to assume that the community is like partners, we're back to square one with our original question, which is, How could you, as the individual who has the responsibility to write a Sefer Torah, fulfill that responsibility by belonging to a Sefer Torah or, or being a part a partial owner of a Sefer Torah that actually belongs to the community. So, to understand this, we're going to look at a similar halacha in the case of Esrog. It is not identical, but it helps open our eyes to the path that we're going to take to resolve this issue. It's the Birabah Zed explanation is this. By Esrog or Minigav is the Bdin as Miznit Yotzebeshutfus. It's very clear that when it comes to an Esrog and the other Minim that go together with the Esrog, you cannot fulfill the, the mitzvah if you are a partner in this Esrog with somebody else. Nor is the Avzayin Kuloshaloi. The Torah says, you have to take it for yourself. Therefore, when you are holding the Dalit Minim in order to make the Bracha, particularly the Esrog, it has to be yours, 100% yours. And yet, it was very common, you've heard millions of stories, where if a community was not in a position to find Esrogim for everybody in the community, the community together would buy an, an Esrog, and every person would fulfill the mitzvah. How so? Because when they bought that esrog, the intention was we're buying an esrog, so everybody could fulfill their mitzvah. You take it for granted that it is as good as if they had declared that the whole community, it's as if the whole community made a declaration. When you take the esrog, we're saying it's 100% yours as long as you give it back to us as the community after you, and then we'll give it to the next person, and it'll be 100% his on condition that he gives it back to us, etc. Maybe it's the same principle over here. Because of the financial challenges of communities. Most people cannot afford to write their own Sefer Torah. That person, meaning each person in the community, can fulfill their obligation of writing a Sefer Torah by virtue of the community writing a Sefer Torah. Because we could say the same thing, that we assume the logic is that the community who produced or wrote this Sefer Torah had in mind that it is as good as if you had written the Sefer Torah yourself. So you had an call, we give it to each one of the community for the time or the mitzvah that they needed. On condition, obviously, that they return it back to the community. 
Kedayas is Sefer Torah, Sivos is all in Gans and Geherin Sam, in order that the Torah and the writing of the Torah should be, belong 100% to each individual member of the community. And therefore, in Kenan Yotz, the Mitzvah from Kisva Gomer, Velamda Gomer, they could then fulfill the Mitzvah of writing a Sefer Torah and learning from the Sefer Torah. Beautiful, it's like the Esrik, Viserim, Mizeh, Das Nita Sefer Torah Shal Shutfus, and it's far better because we're not saying that we're all partners in a communal Sefer Torah. No, as is Vismana Dorish, and Gansen, Zainan, Milech, Hatchila, Kiddele, Kamon. But rather, we're saying the Sefer Torah is 100% yours at the time that you need it, and we'll obviously have to unpack what that means because it doesn't necessarily sit so easily. Because the Chayra is Dasavani Kintiritz. It doesn't actually appear to be a good answer. How can you compare a Sefer Torah to an Esrik? They are completely different entities with completely different legal requirements. By Esrik is Gnug, as the Esrik is Konitzem Shaloi. In order to fulfill the mitzvah of the Esrik, the Esrik has to belong to me at the time that I'm fulfilling the mitzvah. On the river, hell for the call is in Machni the Mesek So it works. If the whole community is happy to give me the Esrik in the moment that I have to fulfill the mitzvah, great, then it's mine, then I fulfill the mitzvah, because in order to fulfill the mitzvah, it had to be mine. But the parameters of a Sefer Torah are not that the Sefer Torah has to belong to me at a certain point. There's, there is no value in having a Sefer Torah, nor yet in a Muzir. Shrive in the mitzvah is to write a Sefer Torah. Whether I write it personally or via a Shriach who is qualified to write. That's why the halacha is that even if a person inherits a Sefer Torah, still mitzvah the person has an individual requirement to write their own Sefer Torah. On Nachmer, furthermore, later in Ramah is a film in a koifta sefer Torah. Velo higi aboy dava. The Ramah says, if a person purchases a sefer Torah and does not correct a single letter in that sefer Torah, have a kachot of mitzvah in Ashok. Veinu yotzeb. That doesn't actually fulfill the mitzvah because the mitzvah is writing, not possessing a sefer Torah. So how does it help that the whole community says it's my sefer Torah? If I get an aliyah, it's considered it's my sefer Torah. So what? The mitzvah was to write it. How does it help that the entire community is happy to share their peace with their, their Sefer Torah, with that individual, as it could be 100% his in the time that he has to fulfill the mitzvah? What's the difference between that and buying a Sefer Torah, which is also not good enough because you haven't written it? So we have to understand that when it comes to community, there are communal authorities who determine what communal property is like. We're talking here about a sefer that belongs to the community. And if something belongs to the community, we apply this principle. That there is the consciousness, the psychological or, or the emotional, whatever you want to call it, um, attitude of the based in that determines the reality of the item that belongs to the community. Thus haste. That means it's not that the community as a collective all are in agreement that the Sefer Torah should belong to so-and-so at such and such a time. Rather, the authority over the community, which is the based in, determines and makes a prerequisite of this Sefer Torah that it must belong to everybody. That's different to just giving something to an individual. That means the gift of the Sefer Torah to the individual via the basin who is the authority over the community is not only that the Torah is yours at the time that you require it, but the basin has the authority to determine that when the Sefer Torah was being written, it was being written for you, the individual, multiplied obviously by all the individuals of the community. At the time the Torah was being written, is like based in Masne as the Xives, which looks when you had an from the Mkohol. The based in are the ones who determine that the writing of this Sefer Torah is on behalf of the whole community and the individuals of the community. Therefore, when the time comes for this person to learn out of the Sefer Torah, which is Be'is Ali Yosel Torah, when he's called up to the Torah, is this a Sefer Torah? In that moment, he is fulfilling the mitzvah with a Torah that the based in determined was written solely for him in that moment. And the basin don't even have to say this specifically to to them sefer for shaved sefer to the to the sefer. Because the law of the power of basin to initiate something is regardless of whether the person who is impacted by it is even aware of it. In this case, the sefer. 
like we find in various places. For example, the halacha which says, that in order to bring a carbon, there are six focused intentions that you have to have. The basin can apply a rule to the carbon that says the carbon has the intention, even if the individual processing the carbon did not have the intention. Likewise, over here, the writing of the Torah has the intention, even though the Sefer is completely oblivious. We're going to take it even one step further, which is going to be mind-blowing. What if there's somebody who was born after the Sefer Torah had already been written on behalf of the community? So you could argue, well, listen, when the Basin made their tnai, their rule, this person wasn't even born, maybe it doesn't impact them. The reality of every Sefer Torah is that it consists, well not consistent, but from time to time requires a little bit of a correction. And the aloha is that if a person makes a correction to even one letter in a Sefer Torah, they get the value of having written the entire Sefer Torah. Then you could say according to every opinion, is life based in Masna's Diagosa Sefer Torah of Farechen Verin Vixivas Astera. So then we can say, you know what? The same based in that is able to apply the rule that when the Sefer Torah was being written, it was with the intention that it's written on behalf of every individual within the community. That same based in can make the same rule that when the Sefer Torah is being checked or corrected, it is on behalf of all those who were born after the Torah was originally written, and now this correction is considered them writing the Sefer Torah. And the same would apply actually from one time that the Torah is checked to the next time that the Torah is checked. Which then helps for those communities who never commissioned the Sefer Torah to be written, but bought ready-made Sefer Torah, is based in Masner, the base then will impose as Bashasta Agov and Sefer Torah is man is man. At some point, when that Torah has to have some correction work done, is the Bashlichus von Yedabach Yuva von dem Kol. That is on behalf of every single person in the community who is required to write a Sefer Torah. Is but made a demit makay mitzvah ksiva Sefer Torah, which is why then every member of that community is fulfilling the mitzvah to write the Sefer Torah. Still, Mendav Nachab Fashtein is still a question. There is still another distinction between the way that an esrog belongs to the community and how a Torah belongs to the community. Because we find in Alachic discussions a distinction between a partnership over an esrog versus a partnership over a Sefer Torah. So the Ramah tells us that if partners buy an esrog together, we assume that if their intention was to use it for a mitzvah, then it, we take it for granted. They don't even have to specify. That we just automatically assume each partner had in mind that the other partner could use it as a gift which he intends to return. Because that was the reason they bought this esrog in the first place. It was in order to fulfill the mitzvah. Now by, my, by esrog, health matona menas lahachzir. Now with an esrog, I need the esrog to be mine. So if I'm you, giving it to you to use, I'm giving it to you as a gift, on condition you give it back to me. That works. So it's yours for a, a moment to do the mitzvah, and then you give it back to me, and it's mine again to do the mitzvah. So dav zayin sheloi below yisvashas netilase. That works because the only moment in the whole story when the esrog has to belong to me is in the time that I'm actually shaking it. Whereas a Sefer Torah, where the whole purpose of the Sefer Torah is to be able to learn, it really doesn't help to say, I'm giving you the Sefer Torah as a gift that you'll return to me. And I'm not fulfilling the mitzvah because you now have the Sefer Torah. And I have to have a Sefer Torah in order to be able to learn. So if right now the Sefer Torah is yours, I don't have the Sefer Torah, I can't be fulfilling the mitzvah. So you think that's a big problem, but it's not such a problem. That distinction between the esrog, which only has to belong to you for the moment in which you are fulfilling the mitzvah, versus the sefer Torah, which has to be always available to you so you can always learn from it. That was only relevant in those periods where people actually learned from the sefer Torah. 
Whereas nowadays, as we've already pointed out, the only time we actually learn from a Sefer which we can see from our own conduct, is when it's read in public. Is be made of Ashlandic, which makes itself understood as a filoid ideas as me need the oyster gamla rosh, the mitzvah blows mitzvahim. That even if you go with opinion like the rosh, that you cannot only fulfill the mitzvah of writing a sefer Torah by having others for him, you also have to have a sefer Torah. No, me muzech shayim in a sefer Torah, and you have to write a sefer Torah. Is that when you can hear about the sefer Torah, so sign tachis yodah, b'chalais b'chal shon. Nobody suggests that the sefer Torah has to be accessible 24 7. Nobody suggests that. As long as I have a Sefer Torah, which is legally mine at the time that I'm supposed to be learning from it, which is when I'm called up into the Torah, and I actually read from the Torah. Noch apratendem, one other interesting alachic perspective. A sefer Torah shall call is andrish a sefer Torah shall shutven. We have to distinguish between a sefer Torah that belongs to the whole community versus a sefer Torah that is shared between partners. By a sefer shutfin is the chalukas a sefer Torah tzvishen zetolin das a shutfin. If there are partners who together own a sefer Torah, we have to take into consideration the perspective and the views of each of those partners. And because there's no specific time within which I have to learn, because I'm supposed to be learning from the Torah at every opportunity, which is very different from an Esrek, where there's a specific time every day when I'm supposed to shake the, uh, say the bracha of the lulav of an Esrek, and that's it, then the, the mitzvah is finished. Then I can't just simply say, well, the reason that they wrote the Sefer Torah was that each one of them would naturally be able to learn from the Torah when they please, which is different to what we can assume, that if two partners brought together an Esrik, the intention was that each one should be able to fulfill the mitzvah when they choose. It's a bit of a stretch to say that every time the other one wants to learn, the, the other partner without, dis, without disclosing really intended for him to be able to take the Sefer Torah as his in order to learn from it. Especially because it's always possible that both partners may want to learn from the same Sefer Torah at the same time. So there will be tensions, which makes it alachically difficult for two partners to both fulfill the mitzvah with the same Sefer Torah. That problem does not exist with regards to the community. The reason you have a communal Sefer Torah is in order to read from it communally. That's the purpose of a communal Sefer Torah. Therefore, you don't have to have any specific rules that you have to specify. No, the based in impl- uh, impl- uh, implies as b'shas yeder is oyle la teira is the sefer teira zayne shaloi. The based in has mandated that every single time a person gets called up to the teira, the teira is considered theirs. On nochmer as the ksevus teira is given far m, and at that moment that sefer teira was written for that person. So that not only would the person fulfill the mitzvah of learning from the Torah, but that also fulfill the mitzvah of having written the Sefer Torah. With all of that information, I'll be calling now. Came in Zogan, we can explain. As al derech zeh obin idem kaim given the mitzvah from ksiva sefer Torah b'pa marishona. That's how all of the Jewish people in the desert were able to fulfill the mitzvah of writing a sefer Torah the very first time that it was given. And in fact, that's why the Chazal only tell us about Moshe's and not about their Sefer Torah. Because it was impractical, as we've already illustrated, that everybody was actually going to write their own Sefer Torah in those circumstances, in the time frame allowed. And the mitzvah of learning Torah is something that already happened much earlier when they were given the very first mitzvah. Therefore, Moshe Abenu Geshimon Farzei Yugimel Sefer Torah Moshe Rabbeinu becomes the lave based in over here and writes for them 13 Sefer Torah, Sefer Torah for Yen Shevet, one for each of the Shvatim, one that gets put in the, in the Aaron. Zainan Zagiven Sefer Torah Shakol, and each of those are communal Sefer Torah. Of a made a lave based in Masna, and Mas Beshas Yedra had Lenin, a vet vet Lenin from the Sefer Torah, had Milechatrin Moshe Rabbeinu for him Geshim in the Sefer Torah. And therefore we can apply the principle, which is that the based in mandate that when you, the individual, learns from one of these Torahs, it means that Moshe wrote the Torah for you on your behalf as your Shliach. 
And that actually explains why the mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah was presented under the circumstances it was presented. The way that the David should put it together is that it would be impossible for each individual Jew to write their own Sefer Torah, and they had no option but to rely on a communal Sefer Torah. Why did they should do this? Does come the lamed of Torah Sabayim in order to teach us subsequent generations? As b'shas amatzer velchis b'ribi shonim as nitiyah that it can shrive in a sefer Torah liatzma. When there is a situation which has been the case for many many years that not every individual can write their own sefer Torah, is the mitzvah milachatchila as mi is mi as mi is mi is in mitzvah sefer Torah shall call. Then we know that you fulfill the mitzvah property of writing a sefer Torah with a sefer Torah that was written on behalf of the community. Now that teaches us a very beautiful lesson for ourselves, an important lesson to share with as many people as possible, and that is, you understand now and appreciate the greatness of owning a letter in a Torah that belongs to the community. Because because in that case, if I own a letter that belongs to a communal Sefer Torah, I'm not only owning a piece of a Sefer Torah because the base demanded it, but we know that the basin would cover me even if I didn't own a letter in the Sefer Torah, and I would still have the fulfillment of the mitzvah. But here we've got one step more than that. But I've actually taken, I've taken action. I've participated. I've paid towards this. I've made a physical contribution to this communal Sefer Torah. Then even according to the opinion that it's, you know, just getting a ready-made Sefer Torah is kind of cheating the mitzvah. That wouldn't apply over here. Here it's considered as if I wrote the Sefer Torah, which gives me the quality as if I was there receiving it from Har Sinai. And then if every single Jew does own a letter in a Sefer Torah, which is the 613th and therefore the concluding, culminating mitzvah of all, by completing all the mitzvahs that hastens us being able to complete the golos our golos that every single Jew is able to lead when Mashiach comes and when Mashiach comes he'll also write a Sefer Torah the Sefer Torah that belongs to the king the Sefer Torah that will have to accompany him at all times as the Pesach tells us that the king has to have a Sefer Torah that he learns from consistently. We should see that with our own eyes. The king, Moshiach, with his Sefer Torah, take care of Umiyad Mamash.